The miraculous appearance of the Holy Trinity to St. Alexander's Veer and the miraculous incorruptibility of his holy body, his holy relic. Now I asked a doctor about this, a friend of mine, a doctor. I said, is it possible for a human body to remain incorrupted this long? Of course, we're talking about the, the, a grace, one of the graces of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, one of the many gifts he has available for us. Man was made to be uh, incorruptible. And this is one of the Christian Orthodox saints that proves this to us. Well, the doctor said, uh, after four days, what happens to the body is that the intestine, the, the gases in the intestines blow up. It's like a fermenting in there. And the first thing that uh, decomposes in the body are the intestines, and they blow it up, and they... Uh, and the uh, body there sort of explodes in the intestine area, okay? So remember that uh, concerning Lazarus of the New Testament where Christ tells his disciples that Lazarus has passed away, uh, that he died. He tells her clearly that he died. And he says, we're going back. He says, uh, it's been four days. And even uh, Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, when Christ says he will re resurrect Lazarus, he said, and they said to Rabbi, Rabbi, it's four days. Four days, meaning that that's the time it takes for all these fermentations in the body, in the stomach intestine area, and then the body explodes and, you know, very uh, terrible things happen. And you're not even supposed to go, the Hebrews were not even supposed to go to a dead body, close to a dead body. But anyway, uh, the thing is that St. Alexander, at one point in time, where the communists took over the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, and they piled some bodies in a pit, uh, you know, of the deceased, he was underneath this, this whole uh, uh, mass grave type of thing. So the doctor explained, even if he was incorruptible, and nothing happened to his body, just being piled, uh, all these uh, dead bodies being piled on top of him, would have caused him to be uh, uh, decomposed, okay? So he wasn't, even though he was. He had all these dead bodies piled on top of him, he still was found like this. Obviously, you can see his feet are like a golden color, and uh, even to touch them, they're, it's as if a person is sleeping. You touch them, the flesh is not stiff or anything. It's just golden hue on top. <clears throat> Besides that, there's a very pleasant fragrance, which is a sign of a sanctity of the saint. So now, the uh, miraculous appearance of the Holy Trinity to the uh, Saint Alexander of Zir, of the, this holy uh, Christian Orthodox saint, the appearance of the Holy Trinity. Now, we do have uh, instances where even Jesus Christ appears to us even today even uh, the Virgin Mother, okay? Now, the uh, miraculous appearance of the Holy Trinity to St. Alexander, and they say, we are republishing the post about this great saint of the Orthodox Church, the incorruptible relic, who is only one after the patriarch of righteous, righteous Abraham, who claimed a miraculous apparition of the Holy Trinity, which touched him, but who is almost unknown to uh, Greeks, with the primary aim of getting to know this great and miraculous God. Secondly, the reference of the iconography of the Holy Trinity, as it appears, uh, which will follow in the text next post, they said will be seen uh, that this icon of the Holy Trinity, Trinity is allowed to be iconized to decorate churches in the houses of pious Christians, in contrast to other icons bearing the inscription of the Holy Trinity, but the true Holy uh, Christian Orthodox Church should not allow either their iconography or the decoration of these non-Orthodox icons, which depicts God, Father, as an elder and the Son as a youth, and in the middle the Holy Spirit like a dove. Because they both should, they all three should be depicted as men, as they appeared to uh, the patriarch Abraham. So, Father Nectarius, monk of Corinth, writes, this great miracle happened as follows. 
In the year 1508, at the age of 60 years, since the Holy Alexander then began to exercise with struggles and um, asceticism that exceed human strength in hunger, thirst, and endurance of the cold, hoping that with his temporary winter cold will av avoid the future eternal and everything. However, the demons, seeing that they were being fought by the Holy One and understanding that they were going to be ostracized by him, tried from the beginning to terrify him. That's what happens when everyone, once you start going on the path towards Christ, you have um, very paranormal things happening to you, trying to get you off that path. But going back to this, they appeared sometimes as beasts and sometimes as snakes that ran at him with hissing and ferocious ferocity and caused him many other temptations. One night, the holy Alexander was going to his solitary hermitage where he used to pray alone, when suddenly an innumerable multitude of demons appeared before him, as if he were as if they were a great army, and they began to jump on him with fury, gnashing their teeth, while a great flame seemed to come out of their mouths, and they shouted to him with rage. Get out of this place, get out of here quickly, so you don't die an evil death. So they wanted him to leave his prayer. Okay, he was a monk. Uh, however, the Holy One, as a good father of Jesus Christ, armed with prayer, was not at all terrified by them, by them because he knew their sickening power, and his prayer came out of his mouth like a fiery flame, consumed and destroyed all the powerless legions of demons that surrounded him. And the Holy Alexander then continued on his way and came to his lonely hermitage, where he made his usual prayers to God, then suddenly an angel with bright clothes appeared before him. Seeing him, the holy Alexander felt fear and terror and falling to the ground, remained there as if dead. The angel took him by the hand and said to him, I am the angel of the Lord and God has sent me to, uh, me to protect you from all the deceptions of the wicked devil and to remind you of the divine visions that you had seen in this place where you have settled because his commands must be carried out. The Lord chose you to be a guide to many for their salvation. I declare to you that this will of God is to build a church in this place in the name of the Holy Trinity, to gather brothers and establish a monastery here. And after saying this, the angel then disappeared. The Holy Alexander, however, loved peace and wanted to live in, in it all the days of his life. And that's why he prayed more and more to God to free him from every, every deception of the enemy. Once, when he had gone away from his hut, and as he used to pray for several hours continuously, suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared again and said to him, Alexander, as I told you last time, build a church, gather brothers, and found a monastery, because many who seek to be saved will come to you, and you must lead them to the way of salvation, the angel said. And saying this, the angel became invisible again. Again in 1508, when the saint completed his 23rd year in the desert, meaning of uh, uh, being alone in solitude, and while he was in his cell one night, and as usual he was praying, suddenly a great light shone in the place where he was. The Holy One was surprised and thought, what does this mean? And immediately he saw three people coming to him dressed in bright white clothes. They were beautiful and pure, shining brighter than the sun, and sparkled with an inexpressible heavenly glory. Each of them held a scepter in his hand. When the, the Holy One, that is Saint Alexander, saw them, he trembled, trembled all over because he was seized with fear and terror. And as soon as he regained his composure, he tried to worship them down to the ground. But they took him by the hand, lifted him up and said to him, have hope, blessed you are, and don't be afraid. And the saint said, My lords, if I found any grace before you, tell me who you are and where, while you have so much glory and splendor, you agreed to come to your servant, because I have never seen anyone with such glory as you. In other words, they were full of the uncreated light, right? They answered him, Don't be afraid, man of divine desires, because the Holy Spirit was pleased to dwell in you for the purity of your heart. And as I told you many times, so now I tell you that you must be a church, gather brothers, and build, create a monastery, because with you I was blessed to have 
to save many souls and bring them to the knowledge of the truth. Hearing this, the Holy One knelt down and flooded with tears and said, My Lord, who am I, the sinner, the worst of all people? How would I be worthy to take on such responsibilities like those of which you spoke to me? I am too weak to accept such a mission because I, the unworthy one, did not come to this place to do what you command me, but rather to weep for my sins. As soon as he had said this, the Holy One was lying down, St. Alexander was lying down on the ground, and the Lord grabbed him again by the hand, lifting him up, and said to him, Stand up, take courage and strength, and do everything that I have commanded you. And St. Alexander answered, Lord, don't you be angry with me for daring to speak to you. Tell me, in whose name do you want the church that your love for the human race wants to be built in this place? And the Lord said to him, as you see, the one speaking to you with three faces, build the church in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Trinity, one in essence. I leave you with my peace, and my peace that I give you will be with you. And suddenly, as St. Alexander saw the Lord with outstretched wings, walking on the ground as if walking on his feet, and then he became invisible. St. Alexander was overcome with great joy and fear, and thanked God for this who loved the human race so much. Then he began to think about how and where to build the church. After he thought a lot and prayed about it to God, one day he suddenly heard a voice speaking to him from above. Looking up, the Holy One saw an angel of God wearing a mantle and a cocoon standing in the air with outstretched wings. And in the same way that he once appeared to the great Pacomius, St. Pacomius, with his hands stretched out to heaven saying, a saint, one Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And then he said to the Holy One, Alexander, build a church in this place in the name of the Lord who appeared to you in three persons, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the indivisible Trinity. And saying this, he made the sign of the cross on the spot with his hand and he disappeared. The Holy One, that is St. Alexander, was very happy with this vision. He praised God who does not give up his prayer and placed a cross on that spot. It's interesting that the saint was prevented the first time he wanted to worship the three angels, the messengers, while the second time they allowed him to worship them. Why? Apparently the first time before he even knew that he was seeing an image of the triune God, and while he was timid, he wanted to honorarily worship his visitors, his uh, awesome visitors, these blessed visitors, as if they were buildings, and that's why it was blocked. The second time, however, he worships worshipfully, which is the way the Lord allows him to worship him as befits God. The miraculous incorruptibility of St. Alexander of Sphere, celebrated August 30th and April 17. So August 30th is a holy memory, his Dormition, and April 17th, the collection of his holy relics. It's believed that God preserved the relics in such a wonderful state of incorruptibility because St. Alexander in his, is the only saint after Patriarch Abraham who deserved to be visited by the Holy Trinity in the form of three angels. And during this visit, the Holy Trinity even touched the saint. And this touch was apparently what made his body immune to decay. Wonderful is a tri triune God who is glorified in his saints. St. Alexander departed from the Heavenly Kingdom August 30th, 1533, at the age of 85. St. Alexander of Zvir glorified with miraculous signs and miracles during his life and after his Dormition. So in other words, his, his, his relics are still uh, incorruptible, as you can see them in the pictures, even after uh, for, uh, 400, uh, almost, well, 500, almost 500 years. So... In 1545, his student and successor, Abbot Herodian, composed his life, wrote about his life. And in 1547, the local celebration of his memory began and his order was composed. On April 17, 1641, during the renovation of the Church of the Transfiguration, where the saint was buried, his holy relics were discovered in a state of complete incorruption. And since then, the church celebrates his memory twice, the day of his assumption, that is his Dormition, August 30th, and the day of the official proclamation of His Holiness and the collection of His Holy Relics, April 17, annually. 
Saint Alexander, the most holy Theotokos promised him, left behind a large number of disciples, many of whom were sanctified and honored to this day by the Church of God on earth as saints. And since then, the incorruptible holy relic of Saint Alexander was a source of sanctification, worship, and healing. The blind received their sight, their light, the paralyzed received strength in their legs, and those who suffered from any disease received complete healing. Demons fled from the possessed and barren women seized or uh, uh, gave birth. Wonderful is the all God, good God among his saints who glorifies his servants in this ephemeral life which miracles and signs with miracles and signs which were done by his hands. And after his death, he even demanded that his sacred and holy tabernacle be placed in his church so that it would shine from there like a great lighthouse with its glorious miracles. And the image that we have of the left hand of the imperishable relic of St. Alexander is here. On July 30th, 1998, the faithful rushed by the thousands to worship the newly discovered holy relic of St. Alexander's fear in the Church of St. Sophia, Faith, Love, and Hope. And after the absence of about 80 years, one of the most beloved saints of northern Thebad returned to the place of his holy struggles. And at de eight decades earlier, January 5th, 1918, the Bolsheviks occupied the largest part of the Russian Thebad of the north, the area around Olenets and uh, Poli. The very next day, the Bolsheviks made their appearance at the Monastery of Zvir in the Reculary of St. Alexander. Such a fund of holiness was an obvious obstacle to the devil and his instruments, the Bolsheviks, of course, the communists, which had taken over the land of Russia at that time. However, in that case, they were inexplicably unable to cause any damage to the relic of the saint or to move it. The communists even made some attempts and only in their sixth attempt on December 20th of the same year, 1918, did they manage to move the incorruptible relic of St. Alexander. This initiated the sad relic confiscation campaign, which continued from 1919 to 1922, when the relics of 63 Christian Orthodox saints were stolen, submitted to scientific examinations, presented as mummies or even as scavengers, in anti-religious museums or were destroyed. Uh, in this period, not scavengers, but uh, as, uh, you know, human skeletons type of thing. During this, time, this period, the entire northern region of Russia was turned into a vast concentration camp. The Thibault of the north was desecrated and polluted, but at the same time it was also sanctified, becoming one of the many Golgothas in Russia. The monastery of St. Alexander of Zir experienced the same fate as many monasteries in the area. It became a concentration camp known as Zvirlag, a gulag, camp of Zvir. And later, it successively became a home for war invalids, and a children's home, a technical school, and a camp. Eventually, the Holy Trinity section of the monastery was turned into a mental asylum, a part of which remains so to this day. Can you imagine? The monastery suffered bad damage over the years. However, God did not allow the relic of St. Alexander to be lost. After its confiscation by the Bolsheviks, it was first brought to Le Donoi Poli. The local community of the Czechists asked for an investigation into the authenticity of the relic. It was examined by Soviet scientists in the hope of proving that it was a hoax, a fraud by the church to deceive the faithful. However, to the embarrassment of the Bolsheviks, the results confirmed what had been recorded during the first discovery of the saint's relics in 1641. That is, that it was indeed Saint Alexander, that his body was, to a surprising extent, incorruptible. His skin was white and elastic, his face, face, facial features were clearly distinguishable and bore an impressive resemblance to the icons of the saint, which were painted between the 16th and 18th centuries. An academician, Petros Petrovich Pokriskin, was not afraid in that era of persecution to write a courageous respond, response to the request of the Czechists. Acknowledging that the relic of St. Alexander's Zvir is undoubtedly a historical fact, the position of which must be it is in one church, we ask that measures be taken to preserve this national historic treasure, he wrote. And from the Poli, the relic was brought to St. Petersburg, then Petrograd. At that time, an order came from the commissariat 
of justice to place all the relics in museums. The relic of St. Alexander was brought to the anatomical museum of the city, which was housed in the Military Medical Academy, and there the relic was displayed as an exhibit, but remained uninscribed, an obvious effort by the officials of the museum to hide it. At the same time, attempts were made to show the fake relics of the saint to the public, which did not resemble the historical description as part of a plan by the communists to harm the church, religion and faith, that is, but the attempts failed. Thanks to one of the scientists, B. N. Tonkov, who was not a military atheist like his colleagues, the relic remained in the Military Medical Academy of St. Petersburg, banished to oblivion. He stayed there for about eight decades, waiting to, for the moment when divine providence he would return to the faithful. On June 14, 1997, approximately six years after the collapse of the communist totalitarianism uh, regime in Russia, the Divine Transfiguration section of the monastery of St. Alexander of was returned to the church in its entirety. The Holy Trinity section, which is a third of the mile from the, of that section, was partially returned to the church September 22, 1998. The research on St. Alexander began in 1997 with the blessing of Vladimir Metropolitan St. Petersburg. Most of the documents from the Soviet period were either lost or destroyed, but the prayerful research efforts of the Sisters of the Women's Monastery of uh, Yeskepi under the guidance of their spiritual father, Abbot Luciano, head of the Monastery of St. Alexander Zvir, were finally rewarded, and in December of that year, 1997, the relic of the saint was found. When this was examined, it was exactly similar to the original description of the first retrieval of the relic in 1641. It was the same incorruptible as before its confiscation, and according to anthropologists and ethnologists, the relic belonged to a man of the Vep tribe, a very small group of Finnish origin who lived in the area where St. Alexander was born and where he later built his monastery. Finally, after the identity of the saint was proven beyond all doubt, Metropolitan Vladimir gave his blessing so that the full relic of divine grace could be transferred to the Church of the Holy Martyrs of Wisdom, Faith, Hope, and Love for four months in order to be placed in public prostration before his return to the monastery of the saint. Before the transfer of the relic to the Church, the prayer was performed in the examination hall of the Medical Academy. And to the surprise of the spiritual joy of those present, the saints' hands and feet began to gush out drops of holy myrrh, as if the saint were saying, yes, I hear you, it is me. This outpouring of grace continued when the relic was brought to the temple. The flow of sweet fragrance myrrh was so strong that bees flew near the saint's feet. Cleric Alexius Young, now higher monk Ambrosius, was in St. Petersburg when the relic was found, describing the existent experience of his pilgrimage. This American pilgrim wrote, I was surprised to see that the saint was not only incorruptible, but his skin had not darkened at all since the passage of about five centuries. It was as white as someone living today. Holding his feet bare, I could see the formation of miraculous myrrh, like drops of rich honey between the toes. Icons of the saints which were blessed in the requiary likewise began to emit their myrrh fragrance. Docimus, uh, the uh, deacon Alexander of the monastery of St. Alexander's Sphere, was constantly standing in the requiary observing not only the amount of flowing myrrh, but also the miraculous healings that took place there. People with many diseases were healed, paralytics, cancer patients suffering from skin diseases or bone diseases and possessed and possessed and possessed, demon possessed, after the transfer of the relic to the monastery of St. Alexander's Vier, November 1998, the healings continued to take place in front of him. The flow of myrrh also continued unabated. It was observed that this miracle increases in intensity when groups of people arrive at the monastery, which include not only believers but also doubters. To this day, the monastery records the miracles performed by the holy relic of God, St. Alexander's Vier. Grace, God's grace was interceding for us. And this I've translated for you from a Greek article. You can understand how great this, mirror, this uh, saint is. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.
support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.